Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome to Fantasy Forecast for November 15th, 2016. It's a beautiful Tuesday. We won some nice money yesterday. Um, the specific lineup that I ended up running, uh, I tweeted at the last minute after these videos changed, you know, and this was on Twitter, you know, Baines. I sent out three retweets saying, you know, he'd be starting, and it was kind of like your big clue, guys. Take Baines tonight at 3,500 at the center and just spend up elsewhere. So I did four different lineups with that, and I'll show that in the scores in a moment. They were all pretty much win tournament winners, except for one. And if they any of them had run and double up, they would have won no problem. So... You know, if you guys take the video advice and if you follow Twitter for the last minute, you know, changes that can possibly crop up in terms of value, I'll always try to steer you guys right. Just be ready, you know, when I mention these other guys I talk about in these videos, this is why I try to do it so fast and everything, though, because you really need to, but still listen to the whole goddamn video, because if you don't know which player to bounce in real fast, if there's last minute value, then you're kind of boned. All right, so let's get on to today's lineup real fast. We've already started there. I'm not even going with the scores right now. I'll show those in a moment. Uh, today at the point guard, Willard and Kanan. Oh, dear Lord, why are we on Kanan today? Well, guys, Rajon Rondo. All of a sudden, game time decision. Out of nowhere, questionable to play today. Sore left ankle. They're not going to let him play. Jariah Grant and Isaiah Kanan will both see increased run. Exactly. We're going to go with Kanan, who's basically been the primary backup when this kind of injury has happened before, and now might actually take the starting role. We are gambling a touch, but he's going to get no run no matter what, and we're going to bank the 15 to 17 points at the floor. We actually hope we get 30 here, just like we normally do, you know, when we pull last-minute value. But So Kanan and then Lillard to balance it out, because you're going right up against a team that's now shorthanded, and why shouldn't he run for 50 fantasy points today? Especially when you can spend up at the position. We're going to spend up at shot guard as well. We're going to get DeRozan. By buying these cheap players, we can avoid the question marks on a cash game like Russell. Russell could give you 45 points a day on a tournament. He could also give you just 30. Tyler Johnson looks look strong today, you know, in the, the Drogic's absence. Yeah, he's probably going to give you 30 fantasy points today. I'd rather pay 3500 for 30 fantasy points than 4900 that's just the way these last-minute values work. That's why people will still beat you. And you're like, I, I studied this, and I know. Last-minute value kills the best of lineups, guys. Be right on top of it. If you're not, you need to consider limiting the amount you play. If you start to play a lot of money, you need to be available before lineup locks and be following these things. Be watching Basketball Monster. Know which players are going to get pickups and minutes in the absence of other players suddenly becoming out because their mother died. Things happen, guys. I mean, that's exactly what happened with J. Rue Holiday, basically, and he'll be back in the next game, but, I mean, there's still one that he's going to be out for, so, you know, you got to be following these things. Um, second position, Dion Waiters. Again, that's the Drogic absence. Take Waiters. Look at the minute run, guys. Um, in the last, As long as the, the situation stays the same, we're now at 36 minutes, 39 points against San Antonio. That's a no-brainer value for Waiters today. The guy hoisted up by 20 shots. He's the guy that's going to run up shots today. So take him. Run him to the bank. Um, this allows you to get LBJ today. No question. Go ahead and take him. You know, solid floor. Even if it turns into a blowout, and it's not expected to, all the spreads today are under seven games. But even if it did, I mean, he's going to give you your 50 fantasy points that you need in the cash game, which you're fine with. If he gives us 60, we're really happy. It's just getting hard to find with him nowadays because he seems to be really willing to get the assist instead of getting two points. I don't see him running up a 60-point game like Kobe anymore. And if he changes, proves me wrong tonight, awesome, because I've got him in the lineup. Hollis Jefferson, this is again a points mismatch on price, and especially against the Lakers. When you see the extra minutes that are coming up because of it, I mean, it has dropped down a little bit. 27, 29, 30, and now it's 21. And just, I think this people are going to be scared off of Hollis slightly, but Phoenix is a lot more like the Lakers than they are the Clippers. And in a back-to-back -back game, it's more likely that Hollis Jefferson is getting more of an extended run day. I see him getting 30 minutes again today, just right back to the normal before he might drop off a bit again. And at 30 minutes against the Lakers, I'm taking it to the bank. At the power forward today, on your cash game, we got Randall and we got Miritic. Miritic is, again, just taking advantage of value. With, that's with McDermott out as well as, you know, now the wrong. I mean, Chicago is an excellent value now across the board pretty much because they have to run their minutes somewhere. 
people are going to be saying, you know, take Kevin Love and everything, but I think the trifecta getting Irving, James, and Love is going to be wrong today. I think that you only need one or two of the three at the most. I mean, you can certainly trade out Lillard for Irving. Uh, Love would be my least likely of the three to take. I know he got 37 full fantasy points again last time he played Toronto. I think he's more in line for 35 today, not the 40-plus performance that we're expecting. You know, it's still close. If you're happy on that short slate, please feel free, but it's your choice. Um, at the center position, so that explains that. Um, what? There's so many other tournament choices today, guys. Um, honestly, on a short slate, you'd be surprised at the last-minute value, guys. But I'm trying to give you a cash lineup, so let's just run that. Um, finally, at the center position, we got Whiteside. Um and Towns. Uh, Towns is certainly in consideration across the board. You can just drop down one, take him, get differentiation. If you want to run Towns against Charlotte, be my guest. I think Whiteside will surprise a few people and be under, more under-owned than Towns. And while you're not necessarily looking for that in a cash game, when none of the guys are going to get like close to 50%, which makes them more of a lock, in my opinion, like a DeRozan or a James, or you know, then I would tend to hesitate more towards the side of going towards the under-owned person than the over, like the middle of the road. And I know a lot of people are going to be on Towns, it's his birthday, and it's, but in, for the cash game, I'd be going more white side just for the, the solid 44. Towns could certainly give you 50 today, guys. It is his birthday. Maybe he's feeling it. He's Rookie of the Year last year. I mean, if you like to gamble a little, go ahead and take Towns. But if you want more of a solid, guaranteed 40 fantasy points, I'd be looking at Whiteside for his rebounding, even against the Atlanta team. Okay, so let me cancel changes. I'll go through my lineup again for cash real fast one more time. We have Willard and Kanan in the point guard position. We, at the shot guard, DeRozan and Waiters. At the small forward, James and Hollis Jefferson. At the power forward, Randall and Miritic. And remember, with the Randall pick, guys, we're going against the Nets, and it's in a the highest over-under game in Vegas, 220. Randall and Mira ticket the power forward, and at your center is Whiteside. Okay. Um, oh, and real fast, let's do the scores. Um, okay, scores were 299 on the tournament entry, 273. This is the one I would have ran for cash, the one with the Marshall qualifier, changing out real fast from Baines. So this was just a very slight deviation from the lineup I originally ran. I just changed out the center from, I believe it was Olenek. And, you know, I went to Baines, and there was some extra money for Ibaka is where I think I went. And I, I didn't change much. I still had a Covington disaster. and But it, pretty much everything was still on the same, and most people should have done okay and found a way to, like, so somehow come around. I mean, my satellites was 11th. You know, I was in top 1,000 on a 15,000 entry, you know, with the block. So, uh, this, I mean, if you, if you went with Baines, you should have been fine. And I do tweet that stuff. Um, 273 on one, that one lost, it was just a tournament. 291, that one won, but it was still just a tournament. 310, that was decent on a tournament. That was probably the best one of the night. How was that? How'd that come out? It was still probably a variation. Thomas, Berea, Harden, Richardson, Covington, Ariza, Davis, Harris, and Baines. I had Baines across the board, guys. Okay, that's it for Fantasy Forecast for Tuesday, November 15th. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of your support. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and support this free channel. Watch an ad if you make any money on this. Definitely leave a thumbs up if you made money on previous you know, lineup from the night before or you like today's lineup. And thumbs down if you don't like today's lineup. And leave a comment down there and you know, let us know what you don't like so that we can all get a little bit better and you know, talk about the decision. I comment on everything once a day. Thank you so much again. You have a great day, guys. Go on out there. Go win some big money.